Elden Ring is a game where you can tell a lot about your opponent by simply taking a glance at what they're wearing or the attacks they're doing. You see your enemy hold a non-hybrid staff or throw blue projectiles at you, an intelligence build. Holding a large and heavy weapon, strength build. Holding a small shield on their offhand, they've got a parry slotted. It's likely that you won't go wrong with these kinds of assumptions. So, let's give your assumptions a test. What happens when you see a person power stancing curved swords? I'm guessing your first thought would be that they are a status effect build, most likely bleed, and they're going to spam a bunch of jumping and running power stance attacks. You most likely wouldn't be wrong, but were you expecting the parry on the offhand? Most likely not. And why is that? First, it is easier to associate power stance curved swords with an aggressive build. Secondly, parrying with a curved sword is strictly weaker than parrying with a shield, so you don't see it nearly as often. Any parry that you can land with the curved sword would have landed with a small shield. The biggest benefit to parrying with a curved sword is allowing you to parry while power stanced without having to swap. And of course, your sense of pride and accomplishment as you land a parry with stricter timing. Let's take these mind games to the next level. What happens when you enter the arena and see a person dressed like this? Whether consciously or unconsciously, your brain runs through the limited information you come into contact with and processes it as best as it can. Just looking at the armor, you probably arrive at a few keywords such as low poise, casual, fashion, and the sword. Now, you move on to check out the weapons as well. A dagger in hand with a staff, and the twirl of the character shows you no shield on the back either. Hmm, likely an intelligence user with a weapon art stick as a dagger. Maybe an intelligence based weapon art, or quick step, or bloodhound step. The ones with even more experience or knowledge might think, wait a minute, that's an academies, not a carrion regal nor lusat. Likely closer to 60 intelligence. Then, wait, where did his other stat points go? With that kind of fashion, he doesn't need high endurance even if he were to light roll. And the battle begins around now, and lo and behold, as you guessed, an intelligence based weapon art stick. The Glint Blade Phalanx Ash of War. Swift Glintstone Shard, okay, this one is definitely a caster. Two seconds later, lightning comes down. Oh damn, Thunderbolt you say to yourself, the ones with the knowledge to recognize and understand the lower intelligence nature of the Academy's Glintstone staff will say. Oh, so that's where the skill points went, a hybrid build of Dex and Int, because Thunderbolt is a dexterity bullet art. No shields, so unless he hard swaps, there won't be any parrying. I see, I see. Two daggers, both weapon art sticks, hybrid Dex Int build. Okay. Still makes sense especially for a casual on a super low poise setup. The dex does increase his cast speed. In fact, now that I look closely, I can see that the misery cord is the glint blade phalanx and the bloodstained dagger is the thunderbolt. Nice. Alright, I figured out his build. I understand what he is playing. But do you really understand the build? Because everything so far is just what I wanted you to think. Smoke? and mirrors. In fact, you've just been played. Because you see, everything I've introduced so far were all distractions. Did you see the gorilla? Sorry, I meant, did you see the third dagger? Because the third one is the real killer. It's cried here with a requested video today on how we're going to be thought stooling people to death. A build based on making your opponents fall into preconceived notions of what your build should do and then defying them in order to make your opponent fall into a trap. Now, if you've drawn your conclusions on the build, I don't blame you, because to optimize for a build in Elden Ring, there's often a fairly standard general rule you can follow. In fact, you should follow the vast majority of these rules to make your character stronger. However, this can be used to our advantage. It's great that most PvP duelists these days at least kind of understand what their opponents are doing, even though they might have never played that style of character themselves. Let's take a look at the full build first. As you saw from the clip, 
we actually want to backstab with this build. The fashion is set by the request T, but wearing a low defense setup does bait our enemies into rushing towards us. The intelligence and dexterity investments are mostly made to make your pokes faster, more consistent, and more annoying, so that you can bait your enemies to rush into a close range battle. One other good thing about investing into both intelligence and dexterity is that you can do lightning damage even if your opponent uses one of those magic negation buffs. In my demonstrations, the only spell I'll be running is the Swift Glintstone Shard for a poke, just to not go too wild with the spells and become a mage. However, you should definitely add more spells you like to take more advantage of the fast cast speed and have more variety at neutral. I encourage you to pick your own here, and I don't want to influence you. We need the close range battle because our third dagger comes equipped with the quick step Ash of War, and in order to do a quick step backstab, your opponent must not be running away. Now, to properly play this build, you must learn how to reverse quick step. Reverse quick step is indeed a more mechanically difficult procedure, so you might need some practice. In order to do a reverse quick step, you start by locking on to your opponent. This is very important. You can't do a quick step backstab without target lock because you would just be stepping in the different directions for quick step. After that, you want to hold down your walk backwards button or joystick. While moving backwards, you then click quick step and then immediately undo your target lock. This must be done in a quick succession, but try not to click the buttons together because if the game registers your target's lock button first and then quick step second, you will fail to reverse quick step. After this, you simply click the attack key in order to backstab if you're in the right position. But do be warned, it is difficult to get the positioning perfectly right and your opponent must be doing an action so that their backs don't turn and you actually have space to slip past them. Even then, latency can have its effect on you and you might be trying to stab empty air. So the technique is not super consistent, but it does feel great when you pull it off. Alright, I'll show you a few duels to let you see how the build works. It's definitely not a sure way to land a kill, but it is fun when you pull the whole sequence off and trick your opponent. Like and subscribe. Let's do Thunderbolt to make sure he chases us. And we can prepare for our quick step. Actually, he's that far away. I'll do. Okay, I wanted to do Phalanx again because he was far. It's fine. We can do our quick step now. Oh, I think I got the, I got the spacing wrong. One big problem is if they know what a reverse quick step backstab is, they'll be on the lookout for us now. So that's an issue. It's best if you can land it the first try. Oh, okay. I target unlocked before I did the quick step. So you don't want to do that there. You definitely want to quick step first. Let's see if we can do it. Ah, oh, okay. I was too far away when I started. That was almost a success, but ah, oh, yeah, okay. Our usual phalanx setup, he, he's doing nothing. I guess we can spam Thunderbolt or Swift Glintstone Shark to make sure he comes. Alright, and oh, never mind. I think he's. Okay, if it's a Moon Veil, you want to use your other spells because, well, they're gonna fight more at a range. And if you can't get into melee distance for the reverse quick step, then you can't do anything about it. Okay, here is where I would want other spells slotted, but as I told you, I'm only going to use Swift Windstone Shard. But yeah, you can definitely see how other spells would help here. We'll just have to try another opponent. Alright, our basic setup, and just a few spams. 
Okay. Well, um, if they don't dodge, our stats are still pretty optimized to do decent damage. So, yeah. Uh, if they don't dodge, I guess we can just win. Okay, let's try to get one win with a quick step. Okay, the setup again. He's kind of unsure of the distance. I guess we'll do one thunderbolt to get him close and reverse quick step. The perfect distance and right as he attacked. And we can just finish him off with any poke. Even a poke with a dagger would do. Oh, okay, yeah. I was thinking about actually doing another reverse quick step. But yeah, you know what? We'll just dagger poke him. Thanks for watching. See you next time. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me. Krite, signing out.